So let's get into a demo though. Speaking of open config, one of the things people ask me all the time, why don't you support open config? Are you going to support open config? And when we embarked on open config, and, and I'm going to actually genericize this, so we're going to use open config, but I'm going to talk about this really more in the context of just supporting NetConf and Yang data models. One of the things that when we put this in, we wanted to do it in a way that made sense from an Ansible perspective. In other words, I wanted to do this in such a way that maintained those tenets of being simple from an Ansible perspective. Anyone ever tried to read a Yang document? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's, it's demo have, time. <laughs> it is not my idea of a fun day. No, it is not. No. <laughs> All right, let's go to open config. So, let's start by just simply looking at a playbook. So this is a playbook. On the left-hand side, we're actually going to run a playbook. I'm going to run this against a single host. Uh, it happens to be an iOS XR host. In fact, while I'm thinking about it, let me go ahead and, and uh, get logged into that. It's uh, in iOS XR02. All right. And we should have an interface here. 02, there we do. Okay, great. So iOS XR, this particular one supports open config. I hope that is obvious. Um, but what we've done with this particular network function is um, this one is still very heavily under, under work. Uh, we haven't actually produced the final functions yet. So we've got one called, um, where is it? We've got one called fetch and one called configure. These are two concepts of network functions in, in this, in this uh, implementation. And what this is going to do, what this particular playbook is going to do is instead of forcing the operator to go off and get all the Yang data models, bang their, you know, bang their fist on the table at their vendor, give me your models, right? What we've done is we've actually written an implementation around Git Schema. We actually just asked the device, why don't you tell us what models you support? If I tell you what I want, you tell me if you can give it to me and I can then configure based on that. That's exactly what we did with this implementation. Otherwise, it's through an exception, I assume. It, correct, it, yeah, it fails, that's correct. Um, so. I'm just going to go ahead and run this. Um, let's go ahead and do that. We'll get a, a sense of what it's doing. So we're going to go ahead and run. And what it's going to do, the first thing it does is it connects over network CLI and it says, is NetConf turned on? Because there's no value in, in having to, to you know, force someone to do that at the beginning. So what we did is we first connected to the XR device. We turned on NetConf. I think NetConf was already turned on in this particular case. We then went and we said, give me your schema for this model, which it did and give me everything it needs from a dependent standpoint. So we actually wrote a plugin for PyYang bind, that mm -hmm. actually, or for PyYang, excuse me, for going out, getting the model, getting all the dependencies, requesting them all from the device. We that store that locally on the Ansible controller, and then we use that to build two files, a validation file and a sample, um, essential implementation. Can see the playbook again? Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. You bet. Can you see that okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so the piece of it you're missing is, so we've asked for open config interfaces, and I'm going to show you what the source file is, which is where the input for the data is coming from. So what my playbook did is it went out, and it actually configured gig002, and it set a description, it set an MTU. Now I just realized that my running config was already set. Um, so let's... Uh, Zero, zero. I'm guessing that what you're doing under the hood is basically hydrating uh, uh, using the template module, right? No, no. no. We, are, we are actually natively converting on the fly in the module that we wrote. We're actually natively converting this into a Yang document and sending it. Uh -huh. So we aren't using template in this particular case. Um, so how this, how this comes together is, let's see, so let's, let's do it this way. Uh, let me get rid of this output directory. Go ahead and play this again. So this time it's actually going to reset the description because I just deleted it. Give that just a second to run. Going over my VPN. I mean, how bad could this possibly be? There we go. It's going. It's just it's yeah. really slow. Uh, I'm not sure why. Um, <laughs> luckily, 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 not all of my demos have to use the VPN, so that's a good thing. Um, this will eventually finish. Uh, I'm not sure why the network is slow. That's the downside of being agentless, right? Yeah, I mean, but here's, I mean, you're right. Ansible is s slow. Yeah. But here's the thing, right? 
you're not looking for millisecond performance from your automation platform. So, I mean, when you say slow, what is that? What what is all does it have to do, and what is the ever like I, for a hundred devices? If I want to update the interface description, how long should I expect a task like that to take? What's what's a ballpark? Every interface on every device? It no, no. Well, a hundred interfaces. It depends. Yeah. Just a hundred interfaces. I'm gonna update the description. Is that what kind of hardware you're sitting on? Uh, what kind of network latency you got? ASR 1000. <laughs> no, 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 no. What kind of hardware is Ansible sitting on? How much CPU do you have? How much RAM? Are you? Yeah. Yeah. Assuming that it has RAM more than it, it would need, I don't know what the requirement is. I mean, you're, you're going to run that. You can run with one CPU, but you're only going to run tasks at a time. Okay. Yeah. Because of the Python gil lock. So. You, well, no, that's not, that's not true. You, you can, you can uh, choose how behavior. many cores you have, not how many CPUs you have. So let's assume I have all the compute right. and resources right. in the world at my disposal. Talking VCU a lot, right? Yeah. So. As fast as SSH connections can right. all establish and run yeah. the command. So SSH it, it, session it, is the limiting factor. So, so it's it's pretty much is. You're really honestly, waiting on the key yeah. negotiation. And it's running it's in serial. Right. Like it's going to do right. one, then it's going to do the no, next no, one, or parallel. it runs in no, parallel? No, no. Parallel. It runs in parallel. Okay. Absolutely runs Depending in parallel. Depending on how much you have. Your parallel if your parallelization is one. If with one Okay. Yeah, it runs, it runs in parallel to a point. So let me re-ask this this way. Like on your system, how long would it take to update 100 interfaces? And where you run Ansible? So eight core. Well, eight virtual cores because it's um, hyper-threaded. But um, so I can run eight devices at a time. For me to update devices, because I'm dealing with Nexus devices a lot, it will take in excess of 40 minutes to do each um, data center. But that's every device, every interface on the in each of the. Uh, are you talking, about, are you talking about hundreds or thousands? Is that or that's more? That's twenty-four. Okay, twenty-four what? Nexus nine case. Okay. Twenty-four times forty-eight would take you that long. So yeah. if I were to update. Well, fifty-two. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, I can't count that high. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it's it would be minutes, minute and a half, two minute type stuff, right? To do gotcha. like large quantities yeah. of updates. Okay, so when you say slow, we're talking about it's not happening in 500 well, milliseconds. Well, versus, versus the agent where you just gotcha. Okay. It just tells the agent do it, and you just consider it done and walk away. Okay. Right? Yep. Because Ansible has to package the whole Python module or whatever, ship it to the location, and via SSH trigger it. Trigger the Not in the network case. Everything we do is, is controller based. So we don't actually send anything across the wire because there's nowhere to send it to. Right. Okay. But but that well, has the, its own and, set of performance. And that's my complaint really. <laughs> we talked earlier about how I hate the way it interacts yep. with Cisco. It's it's because Cisco you can't run Python scripts on a Correct. Cisco device, right? Correct. It's completely not your fault. But but understood. There's a whole lot of stuff you have to do because the assumption is you're you're pushing config to 10,000 Apache servers, uh -huh. right? That's the assumption when yep. you install Ansible. Right? Yep. And you really have to beat it up a little bit to get it to be network centric for you, right? Or I don't want to use you just use that in the presentation. Let's not use that. So <laughs> device centric okay. right, for network well, gear. And, and, and the, the because it's device centric for the the network gear, depending on the platform and the authentication mechanisms, um, you may have to. Um, so on Nexus. If you do an SSH, it's a single authentication because it, it maintains the, a multiplex um, SSH session. If it's iOS, every call is a new authentication because no, it's a multiplex. That's not true anymore. Not anymore. Not okay. since 2.4. Since we introduced persistent connections with yes. Network CLI connection plugin, that persists now for the life of the playbook. Oh, the playbook? Right. Okay, no. The playbook. <laughs> okay, that's good. Well, for the, for the play. Okay. So if you're doing multiple plays. Stop here for, okay. so, yeah, if you're doing multiple you're plays roles, in the playbook, we shut it down at the end of the play and then establish yeah, the so next play. We'll restart. If you're using roles, as soon as it goes to the next role, no. With um, persistent with network CLI connection plugin, we introduce persistent connections. This right. was in two four. So when we start the connection, in fact, instead of me, well, so we start the connection mm -hmm. and we reuse that connection for every task and every role for the entire play. Okay. We do. We used to do that. Right. We used to do that, and yes, that's yes. I mean, now, I was so getting old. E even with persistent um, enabled, uh -huh. there's no. I can go the the roles that we had for mm -hmm. the network devices would take the same amount of time when we were on two two mm -hmm. as they do now running in the devel, which is two seven. Mm -hmm. So there's not been any speed. So with the persistency. So, so let's, we should talk about that. Yeah. 
some other time uh, outside of here, only, only because that's not the typical experience. So there's something else there then. Yeah. Um, to put that in perspective, we have a test that ran in our lab for building 4,000 VLANs. Prior to persistent connections, that one test, and I mean literally VLAN 1, VLAN 2, et cetera, all the way to 4,000, that test took 52 minutes to run. We put persistent connections in, we now run that test in a little under four minutes. So there's something odd there. Not saying you're wrong, just saying there's something odd. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Peter, can I ask something? So we we're, yeah. we're probably, uh, you know, jeopardizing your, your plan that you had in your mind to do this demo, but. That's okay. Um, I know the stuff. I know, I'm happy. I know, I know, I know, you, know, you do. Um, one of the, I think that one of the uh, reasons why we, or we, or the majority of us, mm -hmm. went to Ansible without thinking about anything else, yep. like two, three, four years ago, yep. is that devices were enabled to run Python code, right? So you said, why? I, I cannot do anything that is agent. Right. Um, so agent full, so I need to go agent less, and mm -hmm. Ansible is a perfect choice. Mm -hmm. Now, um, what about, you know, with this aggregation, this whole white box concept, you know, a device is becoming a server. Mm -hmm. um, do you see a challenge, do you see Ansible as a model being challenged by, challenged more, even in the networking space, by, by other tools that are more traditionally known to be, mm -hmm. uh, you know, successful in the, in the uh, x86 space. So do you see a challenge from, from that? No. And, and, and the only reason I can, I can say that with, with such authority right now is because the massive amount of network infrastructure that exists today. Oh, yeah, sure. White Box is of course. fascinating, but it has not even begun to start know, to, to replace that. And organizations need tools that work across everything, not point tools that only work in one environment. Now. Long term, could that potentially be a problem? Sure. Is it something we think about? Yeah, it comes up every now and again, but would you spend a lot of time on it? Not really. You think about it in due course, I think. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Agree. Um, okay, so what I want to show you here is so we ran this open config. I deleted this output directory, um, but it recreated it. And what it did is it went down and it fetched, and here's where you can see it actually fetched all the Yang data models, and it fetched it right from the iOS XR device. Now, let's assume for a minute, though, I don't know how to build what you just saw, which was files config. This is my input. Let's say I don't know how to do this. I don't want to read through the Yang document. I don't want to figure that out. We have a second function in open config that allows us to just generate the spec file or generate the, um, the file necessary. Hopefully my connection is stabilized here, but this doesn't take three days to run again. Um, what this is going to do is this is going to go and it's going to grab all the Yang data files, but then what it also is going to fetch for me is it's going to give me essentially a template so I can see exactly what I can configure for that model and how I have to structure my virus file. Okay, so we'll let this finish running and let me go back into that output directory. And now you're going to see I've got this thing called Yang to spec. Oops. Open, ah, open config iOS XR02. And what I get is I get a spec file. This is how we validate, and it doesn't look pretty, but this is actually how we validate to make sure that the data you're giving us is actually mapping to the Yang document. You didn't give us something that we can't use. So we actually validate against this. And then what you also get is you get this. And what this is, is this is my template. This tells me that if I want to use open config interfaces, I need to build something and implement whatever pieces I need, but it gives it to me. I didn't have to think about it. I didn't have to read a Yang document. I never even really understand Yang, to be honest with you. All I got to do is be able to fill out a JSON file, or if I want to use YAML, I can do it that way too. Send it to the button. And that will work for any Yang document. It doesn't have to just be open config.